Welcome to the Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over the very basics of buttons and focusing in on the states of those buttons, also known as its style. And what we're going to do in this tutorial is what you're seeing on this screen. We're just going to have the image of the button change depending on the player's interaction with that button. So there will be one color when there's no interaction, another color when the player is hovering over it, and finally a third color for when the player presses down on it. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So the first thing we're going to need are actual images for our button to change between. I've downloaded these off of Open Game Art from a user named Kinney. I'll provide a link to these assets in the description below if you would like to use them as well. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in these three images. I have a green button, a red button, and a yellow button. I'm going to use the green as its normal state, the yellow for whenever the player is hovering over it, and then the red for whenever the player is pressing. Now that we have the images that we're going to use, we can go ahead and create our widget. So you're going to right click in your content, go to user interface, and down to widget blueprint. And I'm going to name the widget button states. And you can go ahead and open that up. And then we're going to go ahead and drag a button into our canvas. So we'll go up here, click on button, click and drag it down to the canvas panel. And then I'm going to adjust some of its parameters. I'm going to set its anchor to center, put its position at negative 300 and the X and negative 150 and the Y. And then I'm going to make its size really big since this button is essentially the only focus of this video. So I'm going to do 600 in its X and 300 in its Y. And now we can go down to its style under appearance and drop that down. And this is where we're going to be editing our button to have the different interactions that we want. So we'll go ahead and drop down normal. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different properties here. We'll only be using the image property, but you could adjust the image size if you didn't want the image to fill up the whole button space. You can also adjust the tint here. So if you have one image that you're wanting your button to be, and then whenever it's hovered over, you want it slightly darker, or when it's pressed, you want it really dark, you can adjust the tint here instead of having to make three separate images. And then there's draw as, which is just the way the button's drawn. And then there's margin, which is just how far from the edge of the button you want your image to start. Although we won't be using the tint, I do want to show it to you. So if you click on this little gray bar, you'll see that a color picker comes up. So you can actually just set the color of the button if you're wanting a solid color. You wouldn't have to make a solid colored image for that. You could just adjust the tint. And even though my images are pretty much just a solid color and I could use the color picker instead, I wanted to show you that you could use an image as buttons in the majority of applications aren't just a solid color, but an image. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel on the color picker. And then I'm going to go up to the image drop down and I'm going to get my green button. And then I'm going to do the same for hovered, but get my yellow button. And then finally, I'm going to do my pressed and this is going to be red. And that's all we're going to be doing to our button. So we can go ahead and save and compile. And then we're going to go back to our scene, go up to blueprints at the top, click on that drop down, and then open level blueprint. We're going to add in an event called begin play. And this event is pretty self-explanatory. It's called whenever play is pressed. So from this, we're going to want to draw out to creating a widget. This is going to put the button on our screen. We want to make sure to click the button states widget that we just created. Our owning player is going to be the player controller. So we're going to get that. And then we need to add it to our viewport. And then the object that we're adding to this viewport is the widget that we just created. And that's all you have to do to have your GUI display on your screen. You create it and then you add it to the viewport. So we're going to compile and save. And then we'll go back to the scene and we'll go ahead and click play. So as you can see, the button is on the screen. If I go down and hover over it, it becomes yellow. If I press down on it, it becomes red. And if I release it again, it goes back to yellow as I'm still hovering over it. And if I move off of it, it goes to green. 
So as a recap, we added different images to our button states so that way the player's interaction is more clear. We also added our widget to our viewport so that way the player can actually see and interact with this UI. In next week's video, I'm going to show you how to change the image of a button after it's been pressed. Think of a on and off switch. So when you press, it'll go to one color. When you press again, it'll go back to the original one. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We stream games on Twitch Tuesday and Wednesday. We also have a game called Blast Off on the Google Play Store, and we've developed a Unity asset pack of kids' toys. Along with that, we have a Patreon, and all of those things will be linked in the description below if you would like to support us in any of those ways. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.